WNCT 9 on your side is proud to present Hidden History, celebrating Hispanic heritage. Hello and welcome to WNCT 9 on your side's Hidden History special. We're celebrating Hispanic heritage and its influence on the United States. I'm Ken Watley. And I'm Angie Casada. In the next half hour, we're going to dive deep into Hispanic culture, history, and the contributions all in observance of National Hispanic Heritage Month. National Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated each year from September 15th to October 15th. And September 15th marks the anniversary of independence for several Latin American countries. Thanks to two presidential proclamations, the once week long celebration has now been expanded to four weeks. Alexandra Lamone has more on the political navigation that made this celebration possible and how politics today plays a role. Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates the culture and contributions of Hispanics to the United States of America. It has been in place since uh, Lyndon B. Johnson and uh, it was expanded under President Reagan. Rafael Medina with the Center for American Progress says Hispanic Heritage Month started as a week-long observance and was expanded to a month-long celebration in the 1980s. Since then, every president has signed a proclamation beginning in September 15 and it goes until October 15. But Medina says 2018 has been a difficult year for Hispanics. He points to the White House and President Trump. Medina says even the annual Hispanic Heritage Month proclamation has been tarnished. Last year, President Trump signed the proclamation right after he had rescinded the program DACA. DACA is the program that protects young immigrants who were brought into the United States illegally as children. The program's future is still uncertain, and Hispanics have also felt the effects of the president's zero-tolerance policy. Chris Shemalensky is the deputy director for Numbers USA, an organization that strives to reduce total immigration numbers. He says it's possible to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and at the same time enforce immigration laws. While the administration has implemented a zero tolerance policy along the southern border, uh, it's not targeted at, at Hispanics. It's, it's anybody who crosses the border illegally is going to be prosecuted. Shemalensky agrees Hispanics have done much to shape American culture. There are thousands, millions of Hispanics that have come to this country legally and have contributed over generations um, and, and made, again, viable contributions to the United States, and I do think we should celebrate that. On this, Medina agrees. In fact, he says it's now more important than ever to remember all that Hispanics bring to life in America. For Hispanic Americans who still believe in the American dream, who still believe in inclusivity, in culture, to uh, not grow uh, apathetic and to register to vote. He also wants to celebrate all that Hispanics will contribute in the future. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. When it comes to Hispanic heritage, it all centers around family and community. Coming up, we'll take you to Green and Lenore counties where one local businessman is investing in his community in the name of family. You're watching Hidden History. When it comes to growing the East, one local businessman is working to revitalize both Green and Lenore counties. And he's doing it by breathing new life into Kinston and Snow Hill, all while adding his own personal touch. Nicole Newman has more. The recipe is family owned. The secret ingredient is hard work. They're the critical components that are allowing Salvador Tenoco to add flavor to people's lives who might not otherwise experience his culture. Food is a good way to highlight diversity because you can experience other people and other countries' food without going there. Enriching the lives of people in the East is serious business for Salvador Tinoco. By filling people's stomachs, Tinoco is bringing a one-of-a-kind experience to patrons who walk through the doors of his Kinston restaurant, Sabor. Originally, we were focused on the Mexican cuisine, but uh, we totally expanded it through Latin American cultures. Um, I believe that there's a lot of uh, cuisines that we don't know, and Latin America is one that has a lot to offer because it involves a lot of countries. With a focus on Latin American dishes, Tonoco explains the meaning behind Sabor's name. So my mom's my biggest coach. She's um, the reason why I called Sabor Sabor because of her flavors in her food. I had an opportunity to experience some of that flavor. Sabor chefs whipped me up some mufungo, which is seasoned fried plantain smashed and topped with skirt steak. Now, um, you haven't slowed down since that's been put in front of you. This is the first time I've seen you. <laughs> 
because like it's it. good and it's like it's not often for me that um I mean my family has a mixture of backgrounds so we eat all different types of foods but you know when you get something that specific you go all in so I'm going all in camera and all in addition to its name, Sabor holds another special significance. The location of Sabor is symbolic to Salvador. It's located just off of Queen Street in Kinston, which is the same street his parents walked to work to provide for their family. I believe in Kinston because Kinston was my first home uh, when we migrated from Mexico. This is where we, we came to back in 1988. Um, this street, Queen, Queen Street, is, uh, is where my mom and dad walk to and from work every day um, to, to fill their American dream. Taking the legacy of hard work his parents passed down to him, Salvador is fulfilling his dream by also giving back to the Greene County community. Snow Hill, Greene County has been my, fat, my home for the past 15 years as well. Um, and it has given us a lot, so we have reinvested I would say 95% back into the community. That investment includes what will eventually be called the square. Situated off of East 2nd Street in Snow Hill, the square consists of La Flama. It's the restaurant Salvador opened back in the early 2000s shortly after graduating high school. We have evolved from selling food behind a pickup truck because we wanted to better ourselves to opening up several different restaurants uh, with different cuisines. As part of the square, Tonoko also has an ice cream shop he opened a few years ago, as well as a barber shop, pizza and hamburger shop, and an entertainment venue that's currently under construction. I always wanted to have a, like a plaza type since I was little, and um, when we were uh, working on one building, the next building came up and, you know, ideas uh, surface on ideas to how to bring people into that area. Once the venue is complete, it will bring Salvador one step closer to bringing people together. Chose music as one of the, the big magnets to attract um, outsiders and locals to come. Tinoco anticipates that the entertainment venue will be complete by the end of this year. In Green and Lenore County's Nicole Newman, not on your side. When it comes to business, Salvador says he tries to use as many local products as he can. Coming up, diversity in Greek life. That's right. We spoke to one Latin fraternity at ECU that's cultivating the spirit of brotherhood and promoting unity and heritage among Latinos. More hidden history coming up after the break. When it comes to Greek life on college campuses, there are different types. There's one fraternity at ECU that focuses on promoting unity among Latinos. Lambda Theta Phi has only been on campus a few years, but it's making a big impact. I spoke with the president of the fraternity about its importance and how they're promoting their heritage. To cultivate a spirit of brotherhood. To value and education. Promote unity amongst all Latinos. Uh, to be proud of and cherish our heritage. To assert roles of leadership. To develop character and to serve mankind. That's the mission of Lambda Theta Phi. Granted, that's you know a little cookie cutter answer, but for us, um, just being on campus, kind of being a, a light for Lat Latinos. Edward Andino Jr. is the president of ECU's Lambda Theta Phi chapter and one of eight who founded the fraternity on campus in the fall of 2015. I came to ECU, found out that they didn't have Lambda here, um, and me and a couple of my friends, uh, we just kind of put in some hard work for, you know, about a year to just get paperwork situated. But it wasn't after some failed attempts. We got shut down. Right away. Just because of the name, the name alone. Lambda Theta Phi was attempted in the past, twice to be exact. Due to some hiccups with Greek life and paperwork, it was, it had to have been cut. Since the Lambdas have been on campus, they've brought diversity into ECU's Greek life. Well, just having diversity on campus, you get an overall understanding for other people's cultures. The fraternity has made their presence known throughout the community, hosting several service projects. 
from working with Parks and Recreation, fixing a fallen bridge, to encouraging Hispanics to make a difference. We also did um, a blood drive called the Chavez Challenge, um, which is basically highlighting minorities to donate blood. Um, Latinos in particular have a higher percentage of O positive and O negative blood. And they are making sure they're staying connected with younger Latinos and emphasizing the importance of education. We're actually starting a mentor program um, so that way we can go and help like ESL students, you know, help with the transition of getting back into class. Edward says you don't even have to be Hispanic to join the fraternity either. But you have to be able to want to appreciate the culture that is behind the organization. But there's a certain kind of man that makes a Lambda Theta Phi brother. We're in Lambda Theta Phi and I'm looking for someone. Um, a lot of organizations will say, well, you know, join us and, you know, become better. Well, I want you to be better. I want you to already know who you are and who you want to be. And if you can join Lambda and we can influence that and you can influence us, then that's what I'm looking for. Lambda Theta Phi aspires to not only inspire others, but also raise awareness to the Hispanic culture and values. This brotherhood hopes future brothers will continue the legacy and tradition at ECU, but also throughout Eastern North Carolina. If you want something um, and it's worth having, then it's worth putting the work and effort for. Um, and that's basically how we felt about bringing Lambda here. Um, it's a different type of organization than you see on campus and we felt that it was needed and we put the work that was needed to bring it here on campus. There's also a Latin sorority at ECU, Lambda Theta Alpha. They were established on campus in March 2010. Both Lambda Theta Alpha and Lambda Theta Phi are part of ECU's Multicultural Greek Council. It's established to help promote diversity within the Greek community at ECU. Finding culture through cuisine, food has most certainly influenced Hispanic heritage. But what goes into making the good stuff? Our Brandon Truitt gets hands on. Diving into true, authentic cuisine. You're not going to find fajitas, queso, or even chips and salsa here. This place is the real deal. So what makes it different from the rest? Well, I'm Brandon Truitt. And I'm getting behind the grill, making some of these dishes myself. What could possibly go wrong? Find out next. Vamos a comer, it means let's eat in Spanish. Food is at the center of Hispanic heritage. Some families spending hours in the kitchen each week. And as our Brandon Truitt found out, real authentic cuisine is hard to come by in the East, but once you find it, it's hard to accept anything else. When it comes to finding culture through cuisine, I gotta be honest, I don't know much about Hispanic food, but hey, I'm here to learn. So when I asked around, two places kept coming up. The first is Anita's. It's located off Highway 11, just north of Greenville's airport, and it's where you'll find Mexican food served as fresh as it comes. This isn't your normal Mexican restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You Messy, good food is always great food. This taco shop is the real deal. Anita's serving only authentic Mexican food, pairing fresh ingredients with hours of work in the kitchen to get the meal to the plate. I want the taste to speak for itself completely. That's it. That's Edwin Carbajal, the owner of Anita's. He says his shop is all about respecting the food and the heritage it comes from. All the vegetables are completely fresh. That's my biggest thing was is fresh. The meats, no frozen meats. I quickly found out the first step for cooking in Edwin's kitchen. We're gonna make a shrimp gordita. Then we're gonna gordita. 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 Okay, so that wasn't bad. Yeah. All the <laughs> Learning how to pronounce the food. Everything here is homemade. Everything. There's no hard shell tacos here. That wouldn't be authentic. These are made fresh every day. So this is my friend Veronica, and you press, what, like 200 of these a day, at least? Okay, so I want to try one, and don't be too critical. Forget critical, this was flat out embarrassing. Taking a rolled up ball of corn tortilla, pressing it until it's flat. Oh, it's going, okay. Then the hard part, landing it perfectly on the grill. No air bubbles allowed. This is how it's supposed to be done. Trust me, she makes it look easy. She just showed me up. That's what she just did. Yeah, she did. She just All did. that she work did. just to make one taco shell. You'll find hard work is a theme around this kitchen. We work so hard. 
growing up that you appreciate even the smallest thing that you have. Anita's, named after his mother. The first year, honestly, I, I thought I was going to close down because people would come here and they would look at the menu and see such a simple menu for a Mexican restaurant. They didn't know what to expect, and a lot of customers, they honestly just got up and left because my, they're my biggest thing, I don't have chips and salsa. If you're like me, it's hard to imagine a Mexican restaurant without chips and salsa before the meal, but as you've probably figured out, it's not authentic. She found that people have these expectations. Yes, when people they... have ex expectations of, of authentic Mexican food. Here's the reality. Anita's features tacos such as steak and cactus, pork and pineapple, and a two pound burrito filled with fresh ingredients of your choice. After all, bringing people around the table is what traditional Mexican cuisine is all about. Just down the street, but a world away when it comes to food, is a Dominican hotspot taking over the East. Welcome to Villa Verde. In the Dominican culture, cooking is a huge deal. Giordani's Bastardo owns the place. You might know him as Jay. I think the name picked itself, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Greenville is where we live, but Villa Verde is where we come from in the Dominican Republic, and it happens to be that Greenville means Villa Verde in Spanish. Keeping with its pursuit of total authenticity, running the business of Villa Verde is a family affair, just the way Jay wants it to be. The Latino community, and I mean, I think every family in the world, I think we've moved away a little bit from the kitchen table now these days uh, and transferred or uh, transitioned into the uh, every single device that you can name. To understand Dominican food, you must understand where it comes from. The flavors are often unique. You know, we're an island, so the spices that you get in Mexico are not the same that you get in the Dominican Republic. Whether it's their incredibly popular seafood paella or piña colada served right out of a pineapple, the food you find here is as authentic as it gets. It can transfer you away from Greenville for a few minutes. Uh, that the moment you step into Villa Verde, you, you just, the culture, the smells, the sounds, the way we deal with people is, 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 is a little different, and, and, and we're okay with being a little different. Whether dining at Anita's or Villa Verde, fresh flavored authentic food is served on every dish, keeping true to the heritage of the cuisine and respecting the values it comes from. In Greenville, Brandon Truitt, not on your side. Both Anita's and Villa Verde have food trucks that travel throughout the area. Villa Verde's truck travels to different festivals. You can find Anita's truck right in Greenville on Green Street, serving lunch at 11 a.m. We'll dive into more Hispanic culture coming up after the break. It's all about the footwork and the way you move your hips. That's what this dance class at ECU is all about. These students are learning salsa. Just watch me. We're going to go side to side. Salsa is a popular style of dance many Hispanic communities embrace. It's a mixture of passion, rhythm, and different styles. Just like salsa, the sauce in Latin American countries, there's a mixture of different ingredients. Different in each country, but also different right here in the United States. Our organization is based on bringing all types of Latin Latin uh, heritage together, um, you know, learning dances, uh, either bachata, merengue, salsa. Its uniqueness varies. It's also what draws people to the Suavemente Latin dance class every week. One of the biggest things, and which is the reason why I come here, is a dance style called bachata. And bachata is really big, like where my family is from, which is Italy. And so just that growing up in that little family culture and stuff, it easily transversed over into the Hispanic culture. It's not just about moving. It's also about learning what makes Hispanic culture unique. It's really about passion and um, like wanting to become one and diversifying yourself and trying new things. And trying new things is just what these students are doing one step Five, two, seven, at a time. Five. Thank you for watching WNCT 9 on Your Side special celebrating Hispanic culture. For Hidden History, I'm Angie Quesada. And I'm Ken Watling. Have a great night.